Right now on Backstage, as Britney Spears' private life unravels in front of the camera, her fans are crying, give me more. He's called the man with a golden ear. Eugene Foley has some advice on how you can make it in music and the dish on your favorite musicians. Also, the legend of Diana lives on and the legends of bandstand rock on. Well, despite her crumbling personal life, Britney is moving up the Billboard charts. Reba has the number one album for the first time in her career, and the hip-hop kings Kanye, Jay-Z, and 50 Cent are raking in the dough. So what is behind the roller coaster ride of the music biz? We turn to a music expert, Eugene Foley, the founder and president of Foley Entertainment. Eugene is known for his ear in finding talent and getting them recorded. He's even written a book on the subject that serves as a primer for those who want to get into the business. It's called artist development. I'll hold it up here. Welcome back, Eugene Hi, Foley. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I tell you, the last time you were on, we got such a great response because you really kind of have your finger on the pulse of what's going on. Let's start with Britney Spears. <laughs> um, as an agent, what would you advise her? Her album comes out in November. Uh, her single is doing well now, but what's the future for her career, do you think? Well, fortunately, uh, the American public and the media are very forgiving. So I think if she just comes out gets herself in order, tries to make some kind of a apology that seems sincere, and shows by her actions, not just her words, that she is trying to get her life in order. I think people will forgive and forget, and if the record is great, the first song is doing very well, if the album has some depth, if she tours and starts mm -hmm. getting out there, you know, she'll, she'll be back to the charts. Do you, as an agent, do you like her song, or do you think it's just kind of formulaic? It's pretty good. Hey, it's good. I, I'm more uh, the sideshow. I, it's, it's, you know, I want to see the news <laughs> of what, what she's doing this week. I know, I'm more that's into that true. than the music now, sadly. <laughs> and, and, uh, that's not where the yeah. focus should be, but. Yeah, and look is. look who's doing so well, Reba mm. McIntyre. I'm stunned by that. She's the f her first number one album on the charts. And of course, she did team up with Kelly Clarkson, so that was a help. Right, that was a smart move. You know, who started that many years ago in the late 80s where Aerosmith and Run DMC teamed up, where you had a young hot act in Run DMC yeah. with an older rock act who was a legendary group. And it really, you know, two years later, the Aerosmith is still on the charts. I think Reba made a smart move hooking up with a younger artist, getting into a younger, you know, a new fan base for her. Yeah. And it's really put a spark in her career. So it really makes her more contemporary, yeah, yeah, exactly. doesn't it? Very smart move. Well, you know who's ruling the world right now? Kanye West, 50 Cent. Of course, they were dueling it out. Do you think that feud was real or just for publicity? You know, they're both great artists, and uh, they're great showmen and self-promoters, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone's going to walk away from that type of career over a, a silly little bet, but they're, they're great, and they're doing so well. And you think hip-hop is here to stay. Remember, I mean, when hip-hop really w first was being developed, a lot of people said, oh, it'll go away. I mean, I really think it's become mainstream more so than pop in many ways. You know, the American youth always has to have songs of rebellion, and it started with rock, went into punk, and now it's rap. It's all the songs about, you know, fighting the rules and getting away yeah. from your parents and school and the law. And uh, there's a market for that. Kids like to rebel, and, and if it's not punk or rock, then there's rap for them. Yeah. I kind of like it, too. What does that say about me? I don't know. Trying to stay hip? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about something that this baby boomer is still stymied by, and that is downloading songs. I'll do it for my little iPod shuffle, but I don't do it regularly. I'll head to Starbucks and buy a CD. Is this what they're targeting us for? Well, I think for Starbucks, they're brilliant. They've seen thousands, literally thousands, of mom and pop and chain <laughs> record stores going out of business the last few years. But the baby, baby oops, boomers, yeah, baby boomers, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're booming. They're, they, uh, they still need a place to buy records because studies show that generation still not really doing much of the downloads. They're still yeah. buying the traditional CD. They're in Starbucks every day anyway, buying their coffee. So how smart they put up a couple of racks of shelves yeah. and they're selling a ton of CDs. Uh, you know, of a lot of these established artists. So the that Paul will McCartney. continue on. Oh, yeah. sure, they're making a lot of money from it. I think the boss is in there now, Bruce oh, Springsteen in Starbucks. Wow, <laughs> coffee and music, not a bad thing. Exactly. <laughs> How much can an artist make if you're just downloading one song? You're talking about baby boomers going in and buying the CD in Starbucks. If I'm not going online and buying the entire album, does that affect you know the payment to the artists? Well, usually they'll get anywhere. It could be from 20 cents to 60 cents a song per download, depending if they're independent or if there's a record label or publisher taking a cut. It all depends what the level of the artist is. Obviously, the less hands in the pie, the more the artist would make. Right. Uh, so that's how that. You know, and they so they're still making plenty of dough. Oh they're, yeah. That's absolutely. not anything to worry about. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, they finally got a business model that's starting to work. Do you download a lot of music? Yeah. You're younger than yeah. I am. Yeah, I'll you get do. I, yeah, I like to do that sometimes. You know, and I think it's really going to help the business because how many times have we all bought a record for that one song on the radio? You go home, and that's the only thing on the record that's good, and that's you spent true. fifteen dollars. 
This will now, I think, compel artists and labels to make deeper records. Because do you want a bunch of $1 transactions or a bunch of $15 ones? <laughs> you know? As a business person, you know, you're going to want them to buy a lot of songs. That's and if there's true. only one or two, they're going to spend that dollar and be gone. So it'll encourage the quality. Right, you exactly. That's oh, what I'm hoping. That's, that's phenomenal. Um, how do you get your song on the radio today? Often I'll hear the same songs. Justin Timberlake will not go away. I mean, I love to CD, but come on already. How can new artists break through on the radio? What's the game here? Initially, uh, the only way, really, without a backing of a major, major label, is college radio. The CMJ charts, oh. you know, college radio. There's, you know, 400 or so reporting stations. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not really, in, you know, they don't care about what label logo is on the back of your record. If their music director loves your music, yeah. you're going to get on. And there's no games, there's no payola, there's no nonsense. It's it's more of an innocent time. Commercial radio, you know, who knows? That that's a tough sell without the backing of a label and all their clout and power and connections. You know, the kid from his garage in Iowa is not getting on big station in Boston or Chicago or something. So. But you know who is getting on? The Daughtrys, Elliot Yamin, all of these American Idol contestants who didn't win. But they're doing better than Taylor yeah. Hicks. Explain yeah. that to me. Uh, you know, the, the, the more talented people, I think that show is becoming almost a popularity contest more it is than necessarily an inherent talent. Yeah. And they get enough of a, a buzz off of that show. To, to get on the spotlight, and then their true talents showed. I mean, Daughtry, he's probably one of the more talented people that come off of that show. He really is, and, and Taylor won, but you're right, it was a popularity contest. Yeah. Some of the, you know, yeah. they had the, the Soul Patrol going, so, uh, exactly. well, I tell you, it, it is always interesting to me. Do you love it? Do you just love this business so Absolutely. much that you, you, you never get frustrated or jaded by it? A little bit of both sometimes, but then you hear a great song, and you forget about that, and you remember why you got into it in the first place. Yeah. And I think now, with, with the internet, it's a much more level playing field. Someone can just be an unknown band, you know, in, in, in the basement, and if they could get some marketing and some college promotion and some touring and just, you know, get great songs out there, there's ways that they could break it. Is that your advice for an Absolutely. upcoming group? Yeah, I think the best advice would be, you know, g get great songs, do a nice CD, and get out there. G you know, I would say it's, uh, it's more of a uh, marathon than a 40-yard dash to music business. Right, right. You need it for sustained PR, sustained touring, radio promotion. You gotta be out there. It's not gonna be, you know, that's why we were talking about the one-hit wonders. Yeah. No one wants to do that. If you wanna have a lengthy career, you have to have great songs and be out there. Play the gigs, ha take your lumps, and if you're there, you know, you're gonna make it. Now, you were telling me a story about uh, an artist or a band that you had that now they're on a commercial, I believe. Yeah. Tell me about that. You know, years ago, uh, when you'd hear, you know, Madison Avenue TV commercials, you know, if it was big car manufacturers, fast food restaurants, television shows, it was always famous groups, maybe from the 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you're seeing it changing. A lot of unknown artists or independent emerging artists they're are getting these Toyota commercials or McDonald's mm -hmm. commercials or whatever it may be. Um, a lot of reasons. A, it's a lot cheaper. I mean, uh, using a song by, say, Elton John in a, in a major national commercial could cost anywhere from $200,000 to $500,000 for that song, maybe more. And, and a lots of red tape and paperwork. They can get it from an unknown band, it might be five or $10,000, and two days and it's done. Ah, th that explains Grey's Anatomy yep. and shows like that mm -hmm. using these unknown bands mm -hmm. and then they become known, like yep. the fray. Exactly. It's a win-win. It's a classic win-win where the artist gets their song into millions of living rooms on a Tuesday or mon Monday night, Wednesday night, whatever a given show is. And, and then for the Hollywood or Madison Avenue people, be it TV or commercials or movies, it's usually a you know, couple page of contract that's done in a day or two with their lawyer, a couple thousand dollars, boom, done. Wow. So and everyone wins. And the beat goes on. Thank yeah. you so much oh. for being back with oh, Eugene Foley. Thank you. Your book again is called Artist Development and it really is great. And come back again and talk I about sure the will. music Absolutely. biz. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. And just to head on backstage. <laughs> Train frontman Pat Monahan is going solo and Monahan talks about his music. But first it's your new movie preview with an appearance from Brad and Ben in a